Routes Types, Regions and Route Systems The part of a plant which acts as its centralized system, providing strength, growth and nutrition to the rest of the parts is the root. The root end of an embryo of a seed possesses a radical from which the first root of the plant develops upon germination of the seed. The roots are generally divided into two categories. 1. Primary roots, which originate from the embryo and usually persist throughout life. And 2. Adventitious roots, which arise secondarily from the stem, leaf or other tissues and may be either permanent or temporary. The root is the descending portion of the axis of the plant and grows away from light. Root growth is generally directed towards gravity, that is, it is positively geotropic. Usually the root is not green in color. However, in certain cases, when the root is exposed to light for a prolonged period, it turns green in color, as in the case of Tinospora, some orchids and water chestnut. The root does not commonly bear buds. Sometimes the roots are seen to bear vegetative buds for vegetative propagation, example, in case of sweet potato. Such plants sometimes propagate by root cuttings. The root ends in and is protected by a cap-like structure known as the root cap. The root bears unicellular hair that appear in a cluster in the tender part of the root, a little behind the apex. Root hair possess very thin walls made of cellulose. They absorb water and minerals from the soil. Lateral roots always develop from an inner layer and are called endogenous. They are produced endogenously from pericycle. Roots are much variable in their shape and structure. It is related either to their function or environmental conditions. On the basis of place of origin, there are two types of roots. One, tap roots and two, adventitious roots. The root that develops directly from the radical is known as the primary root, which in most cases persists and becomes stronger to form the tap root. The tap root grows vertically downwards to shorter or longer depths and produces lateral branches called secondary roots. These may further branch to give rise to tertiary roots. The roots that develop from any part of the plant other than the radical are known as adventitious roots. They may develop from the base of the stem, replacing the primary root or in addition to it or from any node and internode of the stem or the branch or even from the leaf. On the basis of the nature of their development, adventitious roots may be categorized as follows. 1. Fibrous roots may be given off in clusters from the base of the stem as in case of onions or from the nodes of creeping branches of grasses or the lower nodes of the stem as in case of maize. 2. Foliar roots develop from the leaf. Example, in bryophyllum, begonia, bogostemon, etc. 3. True adventitious roots are given off by many plants from their nodes and sometimes from the internodes as they creep on the ground. Example, in Indian pennywort. The adventitious roots are also produced from branch cuttings when they are put into the soil. Example, in rose, sugarcane, tapioca, etc. The whole extent of the roots of a plant is called the root system. The development of the root system differs fundamentally in vascular plants and may be classified into two categories. 
one the tap root system and two the fibrous root system the tap root system is normally found in dicotyledons and gymnosperms whereas the fibrous root system is commonly found in monocotyledons Tap root produces lateral branches which are known as the secondary roots which in turn produce the tertiary roots and so on. Lateral roots are produced in acropetal succession that is the older and longer roots are away from the tip and the younger and shorter ones are towards it. The tap root normally grows vertically downwards while the secondary or tertiary roots grow obliquely downwards or horizontally outwards. The tap roots absorb water and mineral salts from the soil and give proper anchorage to the plant. In monocotyledons, the radical also gives rise to the primary root, but this does not develop any further and soon perishes and is replaced by many thin roots developed from the base of the stem. These are known as the fibrous roots. Such roots also develop from the nodes of the stems as in case of sugarcane, bamboo and other grasses. Let us look at the different parts of a root. The tip of each root is covered by a protective root cap, a thimble-shaped covering of cells which fits over the rapidly growing meristematic region, that is, the calyptrogens. The outer part of the root cap is rough and uneven because its cells are constantly being worn away as the root pushes through the soil. The growing point consists of actively dividing meristematic cells from which all the other tissues of the root are formed. The growing point also gives rise to new root cap cells to replace the ones worn away. Immediately behind the growing point is the zone of elongation where the cells remain undifferentiated but grow rapidly in length by taking in large amounts of water. The growing point is about 1 mm in length and the zone of elongation is 3 to 5 mm long. These two are the only parts of the root that account for the continued elongation of the root. Above the zone of elongation is the zone of maturation characterized externally by a covering of whitish root hairs. In this zone, the cells differentiate into the permanent tissues of the roots. Each root hair is a slender, elongated lateral projection from a single epidermal cell through which most of the water and minerals are absorbed. Root hairs are delicate and short-lived. New hairs are constantly formed just behind the zone of elongation and old hairs further back wither away and die as the root elongates. Only a short segment of the root, perhaps 1 to 6 cm long, has root hairs.